technical audio challenges. Um, but uh, it's my pleasure. I'm Maurice Collins. I'll be the host this afternoon. And it's my pleasure to be sitting here on campus uh, at Case Western Reserve in wonderful Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, sitting next to me is our presenter today, uh, Joan Schenkel. She will be uh, joining us today and talking a little bit about their experience over the course of the last six weeks uh, or so as they have deployed Info Ready Scale and the Engagement Hub for the School of Medicine uh, here on campus. Um, along with using Scale, uh, they, they have also they leverage Info Ready Review um, across the campus as well. Uh, a little bit about the schedule and the logistics for the session uh, today. What you're going to see is us present for about 45 minutes or so. Uh, Joan will talk for about 15 or 20, and then we'll show you a quick demo of their engagement hub, and then we'll open the floor to the general questions uh, that you may have. So if you have any questions or needs, uh, by all means, post those and we can, we can answer those. And without uh, further ado, I'll turn it over to you, Joan, uh, to give everyone the details over the last few weeks. Hi, hi, everybody. Um, thanks for the opportunity to share our story of the adoption of our CWRU Engagement Hub. Um, I want to start off by at first um, thanking Perlene Cartwright, um, who is here with me. If it were not for Perlene's hard work in the last six to eight weeks, we would not have an engagement hub. Um, she just wanted me to do the talking, and I'm inviting her to step in at any moment um, if she has something to add to the conversation. Um, she is the department administrator for the Office of Research Administration at CASE, and she's been with us for a year, and I can't say enough nice things about her. Um, <clears throat> I have been at CASE since 2005. Um, I am currently the assistant dean for research administration 50% of the time, and also 50% of the time the administrator for the Department of Nutrition. So I have a dual role here in the university, and I'm actually not your typical research administration person. I'm more of a problem solver, um, take care of whatever challenges um, need to be handled, and um, I sort of think of myself as that no one else wants to do the job, so they hand it over to me to do. Um, so that's sort of how I got involved with the whole info-ready process. Um, and thanks again. Um, <clears throat> I'll talk about how we started with this. Um, in um, 2018, um, the CTSC, the Case Clinical Translational Center Collaborative, and the Case Comprehensive Cancer Center um, needed to have a new grant review program. And in the past, what would have happened is they would have each by themselves purchased the system, and then <clears throat> we would have found out that we all had competing systems. Um, this time we all got together and um, I heard that they both needed a system and we all got together and talked about how we could work together to buy something that would work for everybody. So we implemented InfoReady Review. Um, and this was a great example of collaboration um, and getting together. Um, I think this also came to be because a few years prior to that we implemented iLab. And again, that was also a bottom-up implementation. And at our university, um, most successful changes happen when they're bottom-up, not top-down. Um, we have a lot of people who are very skeptical of change and various other things, so it seems to work better that way. Um, um, so then um, also beyond this, CASE has changed its website three, to, um, three or four times in the last five years. Um, the website right now is um, very difficult to update. It's not very current. It's actually, um, it, it could be a lot better. Um, I have to say also with the website, um, I'm, uh, there are very few of us that actually use the website every day. It does have a search function. Most people don't even know where the search function is. And at least once a week, I'll get a call from somebody asking me for information on our website that very easily they could find if they actually searched for it just to give you a little context of how uh, bad our website is. I shouldn't say that, but I am going to. Um, 
Finally, at Case, and I'm sure at your universities the same thing happens, you'll receive 10, 15 emails a week about information that's happening on campus. And it's really information overload. Um, we get a daily email. We get emails from the provost. We get emails from the dean. We get emails from the wellness office. We get emails about seminars, professional development. Um, I also come to find out that many people delete the case daily. And the case daily is cases newspaper. It, it tells you what's going on, and many people don't read it. So we're stuck with this problem where there's lots of information, lots of things that faculty need to know. And I will also say CASE is very, very good at having flyers up all over campus. So we, we've got the flyers. So I think that also helps with this engagement hub idea. Um, a few years ago, I tried a Google site for department administrators and, and administrative staff to get information out about how to do things. That worked modestly well. However, um, it was really hard for me to keep up with. Um, enough of that background. I'll give you a little bit of where we were. Next slide. Um, again, faculty have commented, it's hard to find stuff. They don't know where it is. Um, so we wanted something that was um, easy to use. I saw the demo of the engagement hub, hub and it struck a chord with me. I thought this would be worth trying something new um, that would in to increase the information that we could get out to faculty. It would give them an opportunity to find information when they wanted to find it. Um, <clears throat> it's, it fits our goals. It's useful. Search function, maybe people will use the search function. Um, finally, it, it can be put up without <clears throat> a lot of technical skills. Um, and in fact, today in preparation for this presentation, um, Perlene and I were looking at the um, site and we were looking at our carousels, which you'll see in a few minutes. And I said, no, the name of this carousel doesn't quite fit what, what it should say. Perlene timed it and in a minute and 20 seconds, she was able to add five or six new tiles to the carousel, and she was able to change the name of the carousel. And that was just me, which tells me also, as we go forward and we get feedback from our faculty and staff, this, how we use this engagement hub may change. Right now, it's very much research focused, and it may be that we find six months from now that we wanna make it more staff focused, or community focused, or student focused. So there's lots of different ways that we can use this, this hub, which I think is great. It makes it nice for us. <clears throat> um, getting buy-in and support. Um, we did a demo. Um, again, trying to do this bottoms up. Um, I had people from Central Research Administration, the School of, Finance, School of Medicine Finance and Planning Office, people from the Cancer Center, people from the CTSC, and then people from the Office of Grants and Contracts we all met together and actually sat in this room, <coughs> excuse me, and had a demo of the software and discussed, could we use this? Would this be good? Would this be helpful? I really wanted buy-in because there was no point in, in, in implementing something if no one thought it was a good idea. And again, that's because of the way CASE works with bottom-up instead of top-down. Um, then we decided, we brainstormed names, and we decided to call our tool, a unified search tool, and we're using this and marketing this as something to help our faculty and staff find information about research and um, professional development on the campus. So how once we decide everybody decided that this was a great idea and that we would we would work on this together, um, I said, well, before we can get somebody to pay for it, we need to really Let's look down and think of all the different things that we could put on our site. So we brainstormed together as a group and we came up with on a share drive. We could have a, tiles for limited submission, pilot funding opportunities we could put up, general funding opportunities, research events, professional development events, other information that faculty need, um, how to use ORCID, how to use Authenticate. There's so much information that we need to get out to faculty. Then we listed, you know, different tiles, and I, we, I think we came up with a list of 40 or 50 things that we could put on there. The other uh, thing that we all agreed to is that we would open up the management of the system um, to not just Perlene and Joan making tiles. We have and somebody from the Office of Grants and Contracts, the Cancer Center, and the CTSC, 
and Central Research Administration who all have access to make tiles if they would like. In addition, we did create a, a email, the unified search tool at case.edu, so that if people have feedback, they can send it directly to Perlene and myself. Um, after we had our list and I had buy-in from all these groups, I did go to um, leadership in the School of Medicine and ask for financial support to um, implement the system, and I was given the go-ahead. Thanks. Okay, next slide. Um, so let's, I was using some words previously that may seem a little, um, want to back up and make sure we're all on the same page. Um, the three main terms that we use to describe our engagement hub is our carousels, and there are groups of tiles that are searchable, scrollable, and can lead to storefront, storefronts or external links. When I think of the carousels, I think of Netflix. Um, then we have storefronts, which is a page that has a collection of tiles on it that are grouped by theme. Finally, we have tiles, which are snapshots of information to highlight and encourage further exploration. Um, I, again, I think of this as if it were Netflix. And Maurice, the next thing that we need to do is we need to make this so that it will tell me what I need to be looking at. <laughs> so, and I, I think that would be the next step is, oh, you're interested in this type of research event. You might be interested in this type of research event, too. So that's, that's the next step for InfoReady. I thought that would be really cool if it did that. So I'm going to turn to the next page. Um, so here is um, a link to our page. One of our carousels, as you can see, is faculty. That has a, many tiles. Um, 40 tiles of um, information and storefronts that might be um, important to our faculty. Then we have like tiles. Um, and again, some of these, such as the case daily, will actually go to a page that will link to all old case dailies. Science Savvy, uh, Savvy Scientist goes to a uh, link to the publication Savvy Scientist that went out. And then you can see there's another carousel for staff. Um, OK, next slide. Um, so again, now that we've implemented this, we needed to figure out what tiles we were going to use. So we used a Google Sheet, uh, and everybody was allowed to and encouraged to upload and put down names of potential tiles that we wanted to use. Um, we also agreed, which is really important, that when we made these tiles, we were going to link to source documents. So if we have, we have a tile that links to our Office of Research and Technology Management, that Central's research website, we actually link to their website. So wherever we possibly can, we link to a website that is professionally maintained and developed. And also, then we don't have to worry about updating it as time goes, time goes on. Um, then we also utilize the storefront option so tiles could appear on more than one carousel. Because there is some information that might be useful for a faculty member that might also be useful for a staff member. So by using storefronts, we were able to share inf information across carousels. Um, we based, um, then after we um, had all of our tiles listed and we had some basic storefronts, we went back and discussed what would be the most important carousels to have on our front page. We thought if we had 20 different carousels, that would be too many. So we ended up agreeing with just a few carousels on the front page. Um, and those really, those are faculty, staff, all funding opportunities, research events, and then the one we changed this morning was research information and resources. Earlier today, that was Office of Grants and Contracts, and we changed it today to make it more, um, it seemed to make sense for us, and it would be something that people would say, oh, I get what's going to be under this carousel. Next slide. Um, here are filters. Another part that was very important to us was uh, figuring out what filters we wanted so that our faculty could, and staff could search. So um, the simple ones, location, funding amount, awards, those all made sense for the funding opportunities. And then we also talked about opportunity types. A case um, wellness is very, very important, so we wanted to have a way to filter wellness activities, or a lot of our faculty take advantage of education on campus, use education opportunities, <clears throat> awards. Um, then we have different funding types. 
bridge funding, limited submissions, pilot funding, just like everybody else. We wanted to be able to, for a faculty member to be able to go in and say, I only want to know about bridge funding. Find me the page. Um, so that's how we came up with those. Again, um, as Perlene can attest, it's very, very simple to add different filters. So I am sure as time goes on, we will be changing and adding new filters. Next slide. Um, here are some of our storefronts that we have. Um, all funding opportunities, faculty, staff, <clears throat> pilot funding, Office of Grants and Contracts. Our Office of Grants and Contracts submits all of the grants for the School of Medicine, and um, they have everybody has to follow their rules and policies and procedures. Um, unfortunately, um, we did analytics, and not a lot of people go to their website. So this hopefully would get more people engaged with what they need to know to um, submit grants. Um, a lot, we have a lot of staff events, research events, and faculty development, um, professional development. So again, we made storefronts for all of those items so that we somebody could click on one of those tiles and see all the pilot funding opportunities or all the research events on campus. Next slide. <clears throat> Um, now that we have, um, I think, 52 active slides, it's really now time to um, get the word out that we have this up and going, um, up and going, and that we want people to use it. Um, we've attended chairs meetings. Um, we've developed a PowerPoint slide that we are going to, we've given to all the departments um, so that they can share the slide at the end of their faculty meetings. We have an administrative forum meeting monthly. I've presented at the administrative forum meeting. I will continue to do that. I've added an email, um, email um, a link to the website on my email signature line. Um, and I'm constantly asking people, what do you think should go on here, as is Perlene? Um, and we're, it's going to be one of those crowdsourced adoption strategies, and we're hoping that this will catch on um, with with the School of Medicine, I've gotten some very good feedback, and I think it's a matter of people remembering to use it. And as we all know, we're going to have to remind people many, many times that this is available, and that's what we will all continue to do. Um, again, go, keep going forward. I've, we've got to just keep um, sharing and publicizing that we have our unified search tool. Um, I think. We need, I need to keep asking for suggestions for tiles and pretty much always say yes to all tiles and make sure that everybody's welcome to participate. I know that may seem odd, but CASE is very much of a um, school that has silos and um, is very <clears throat> separated. And I've, we've decided that if the nursing school wants to send, put us, give us information about nursing school research events, we're going to add them. And we're just because the more and more people that we have using the tool, the better off it'll be for the whole university. Um, and then we're having bi-monthly meetings with the key stakeholders from each of the offices that helped facilitate this to ask them what they need for the unified search tool and find out what their bosses say about it, much more we need to do to add it to continue to grow support. <clears throat> Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you, Joan. That was way shorter than 15 minutes, sorry. <laughs> let's, uh, let's transition and do a little show and tell of the engagement hub itself. How does that sound? Awesome. All right, so here we are looking at your uh, engagement hub. Um, as we can see here, you have your faculty and your staff carousels along with all funding opportunities and research events and information and support and then all opportunities. Can you talk a little bit about the, the layout there and, and why it is the way it is? Um, we decided at first that this, the, the purpose of this tool and one of the, when we were developing and we had to think about who was our audience and why we were investing in the unified search tool. And we are really investing in this, especially since I'm in the Office of Research Administration, to promote research and research activity. And the, the people who con conduct the research at CASE are the faculty or they lead the research. So our first top carousel is for the faculty. And as you can see, there's a tile about the IACUC, 
the Case Comprehensive Cancer Center funding opportunities. We have the State of the School of Medicine on Friday. So this is right at the top that the faculty can see information that we know is going to be important for them to get their jobs done. The staff heavily support research, so many of the tiles on this carousel are for um, re research that will uh, information that will help them do their jobs or information that they need to tell the faculty about, because a lot of times the faculty need a little bit of uh, help knowing where to go to find the information that they need to do their job. It's all about the funding, so we have all the funding opportunities up here. And again, even yesterday, Perlene put the AMFAR funding opportunity. We get a newsletter every Friday that has funding opportunities. I'm not really sure how much that's used. And if it's posted one week, what might end up happening is on on Monday, um, you know, two weeks later, somebody wants to do the AMFAR application. They can't remember which which newsletter it was on because it's only sent once on Fridays. This way, if I can get them to go here, they can go, oh, yeah, when was that? So, and again, we linked right to the source document so that we know we have the current information in, in, in here and it's not us making it up. So how are you deciding at this point what tiles to create, um, which ones to add, where to recruit new content for, things along those lines? Um, I'm trying at this point to add um, content with funding opportunities that are specific to the School of Medicine, funding opportunities that I think would be of value to our faculty. Um, also, Sometimes they're dead. I'm trying to choose things that have are due in a couple weeks or a month or six weeks. I don't want to do something that's due tomorrow because that's just not not practical. Um, so that's sort of it's more. I'm on every email list in the university, so pretty much any time I get an email. I mean, Perlene, how many times a week do I send you something? I'm at least I'm like, hey, can you put this on the in, put this on here so that it's much it's very much organic. And again, I. have the Cancer Center and the CTSC have been adding information that they want to add. And as we go out, I'm going to continue to encourage people. Um, we get a lot of emails in our office saying, oh, we have this seminar and this presentation. We'd like, can you, can you send out an email from the vice dean for research? What my plan is, is next time somebody says they want to do that, say, okay, that's fine, but you need to put a link to the unified search tool, and I'd like you to almost have them go to the unified search tool. So it's going to be, again, a slow but organic way of getting this done. And people may ask why that is. Case is That's just the way case works. Case works in the way where when people find things and they adopt things because it's useful for them, it works the best. And so I know that may seem a little counterintuitive, like why aren't you just telling people they have to use that? It, it just doesn't work that way here. So it's, if you offer it, they will come. And that's, we have, that's how we implemented iLab. So if you click on the view all and you go into a storefront, can you talk a little bit about how you are, are taking advantage of those at this point? I think mostly for for these um, again, this is the staff. The staff one is just again all the tiles without having to go to. It could be the carousel. If, I think if you wanted to go to like is it um, research funding or research events, click on research events. That storefront you can see on the right, all the way on the right. That actually goes to. Doesn't that one go to? Forgive us. We're like I said. We're that actually, that's where we're really using the storefronts in that we're, so our carousels aren't super duper long. We're trying to group things together and say research events. So we might have all of these research events listed on the carousel, but we're going to have one tile that says research events so that if somebody says, I know what I want, they're going to come here, they're going to see five or six different opportunities, or in this case, seven, and say, oh, wow, I didn't even know that this was available. So that's sort of how we're using that. And again, it's it's been growing. This page a few days ago only had 
two items on it. Now it has seven. So again, every time Perlene and makes a new tile, we're trying to figure out where should we put that tile and strategically place it. And again, it's we're very much very young at this. It's very it a work in progress. So. Sure. Is there anything else on the engagement hub we should call out for the folks on the webinar? Um, I, I just I I think this is a really great tool and a really nice way for our faculty and staff to be able to um, learn about what's happening at their university. And I'm I'm a big idea kind of person. I could see this um, the school of Met, the university has 70 or 80 opportunities for um, students kids to use the campus on the in the summertime. Like what a great way to actually point everybody to find out about all your summer opportunities and your research opportunities. Um, I, I could see this being used in so many different ways for students, all the different clubs and activities. Um, so we're, like I said, we're starting now. If I were queen, I would have everybody using the engagement hub, but I'm not queen. So um, I, that, I, I, I see this as a really great tool. And again, I'm hoping that um, it's adopted through here throughout throughout the School of Medicine so that it can be utilized in more places. And that's what I will, just because I think it's a, it's a nice way to find information and it's simple to use and it's straightforward. Wonderful. Colleen? Yeah, so I just wanted to build off a little bit of what Joan said. In terms of what I like the best in terms of moving through InfoReady scale, is that it presents a lot of data and information in a very easily digestible way. You're not bombarded with emails or things like that. You know, you are the person who is in control and deciding, I need this information, I want to look for something, so I'm going to go to this one place where I know that things are summarized in a really easy way. Uh, for example, when I was creating links for different departments and things, um, while the departments had really beautiful websites, uh, you would get, you know, five to six paragraphs describing what a website was or what the department was and what they offered. And so in terms of someone who's really busy, I know everyone who's probably listening in is super busy. They can go in and just see that like, oh, in 140 characters, I know what this department does. Great. Um, I think that another really important thing that is um, makes InfoReady Scale unique is that it complements existing uh, structures that we already have at the university. So we're not trying to reinvent the wheel or anything. We're just trying to connect people to the information that already exists. And that was one of the keys, actually. I would suggest to Perlene that, oh, I want to link to this website and for this information, and then it would take us a half an hour to find the information. So this is nice that we now know Selfishly for us, we've made tiles for things that we need to find <laughs> very easily. All right. Have without, any questions. without anything else, we'll, we'll transition into question and answers here. Um, for those of you uh, on the phone, um, you can submit your answers to us uh, in the GoToMeeting console. You should be able to have a way to, to post your questions to us. Um, we've already had a couple questions come in, so I'm going to address those to you, Joan and uh, Perlene, and if you guys happen to know how to respond, by all means. Uh, the first question, what metrics are you utilizing to measure how faculty and staff are utilizing the site? We actually get an email every day that talks about how many people, how many tiles we have live and how many unique users we have. So we're going to continue to use that um, site. We have not put this behind single sign-on yet. Um, if we choose to put it behind single sign-on, I am sure we will have more access to more information about it. Um, I do think um, sometime three or four months from now, I'm going to try and send a quick survey out to department administrators and ask them to survey their faculty and get more feedback. I'm going to do that on a regular basis. But I am getting the email every day, and it's nice to see. I'm like, oh, we have 52 tiles. We have a you know this this many unique users, so we're using both of those because I'm going to need that to build support to continue to have this after the first year. So as an add-on to that question, what would you say would be the success metrics? 
what what does success look like for you when it comes to the analytics and the metrics? I mean, I would I think a large number of unique users would be would be nice. Another metric, it's and again, it's I'm a I'm a feeling kind of person, you know, to have people in the elevator say, hey, this unified unified search tool is helping me out. I really like it. I think, again, um, at, at um, I think that to me is the positive feedback that I need. My, our boss already says, this is great. I love it. I just have to remember to bookmark it. And he'll be using it on a regular basis. I know that. So it's, there will be some metrics. You know, I think we need a number of unique users for the system, but also word of mouth and just positive feedback from the, some of the key stakeholders and the key leaders in the university, which is not a metric, but it's, you know that's uh, ha probably what would help us keep keep this going. Okay. <clears throat> um, the next question: uh, Do you happen to have any? Uh, early feedback from faculty and staff? What sort of uh, you know word on the street have you received so far? I'm not I like I said, my our boss, the vice dean for research, thinks it's great. He's like, this is wonderful. I'm going to bookmark it. Um, I've we've shared it with faculty. I haven't been to any faculty meetings. Like I said, this has only been live three weeks, so I don't have any feedback from them yet, other than. Some of my department administrators, they're easier to get to say, this looks really nice. I think it will be useful. And again, it's only going to be as useful as we make it by putting information on there that's pertinent to their job. So we need to, I just need to continue and to be very aware of what I can pr put on there so that they want to go look at it. If that makes any sense. You know, oh, you, you want to find this information? Like, um, everybody needs an ORCID ID. Well, if you want to learn how to get an ORCID ID, go to the Unified Search Tool. This is where you're going to find that information kind of thing. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, the next question that we have for you, um, what sort of effort um, and you know burden has this placed on your team to get this launched? Arlene would have to answer that. <laughs> um, it hasn't been a, a large burden at all. I would say that maybe at the start of it, there is a little bit of just learning how um, we wanted to have our information presented in terms of just, you know, having a uniform setting for pictures or making sure that when we have our child that they're for uh, funding that we list the same three headings that are on it just to give it a sense of uniformity. But in terms of the actual um, workload, it's pretty much Joan will get all of her newsletters and emails and then, you know, cycle through and say, hey, Perlene, I think this one will be great. And then 10 minutes later, I, you know, found the, I, I wrote the short description for it. And that's pretty much it. It hasn't been too bad. You know, a couple times a day, I start, I, I'll make tiles and it's uh, been pretty easy. And, I, and again, truthfully, at 10.45 this morning, one of the tiles said uh, carousels was grants and contracts. And I'm looking at the site again. I'm like, okay, I've looked at this enough. I'm oh, wait, this need, needs to be reorganized this way. And we, three of us sat down and had a conversation. I said, this is why I think this should be this way. What do you guys think? And Perlene went out, and a minute and 20 seconds later, she comes back. I timed myself. It was a minute and 20 seconds, and I was able to add all of these things to this carousel, and, which is great. So it also explains, it shows how versatile it is that you can put information in different places really quickly, which is wonderful. All right. One, one more question. There's a couple logistic questions I'll respond to um, after this one. But um, now that you've went through over the course of the last handful of weeks to get this spun up, what would you do differently? Looking back on it, and you know, as a recommendation to anyone that's that's looking to to launch an engagement hub. Um, I, it, if you could get, um, and not that I don't have leadership's involvement, but I I think if you could get this to be spun out in a way that is um, from at a, at a higher level, I think would be a little would be better better off. Um, again, 
politics and other things like this is done by research administration for research and that's what I'm doing but if you had your communications office or some a, a more centralized office um, behind this I think that would be make it much more impactful again that's not the situation here right now so that would be one thing I, I wasn't I wasn't sure how well this would go so I didn't know how far to push push higher at places outside of my my little silo and I wish I had gone outside of my little my silo a little sooner um, and I will go outside of the silo at some point but um, I don't know any you all work at universities you know how politics at universities is so that's that's if it, that's one thing that I think I would do differently like it would be not you know the provost should know about this and all the deans and the president of the university that kind of thing Perlene, anything to add to that? I don't really think so. I think that the only thing that I would say um, is maybe drawing on our group of users more regularly. I have a tendency to just um, get very single-minded. So if I'm like, okay, I'm going to be making the tiles, I'll, I'll get something and then I'll just plow ahead with it instead of like, oh, I... I could probably start asking our group a little bit more in terms of more sources for information and just, you know, slowly um, going down that route so that it's not just Joan who is, the, you know, uh, figuring out what should be tiles and what shouldn't be. Um, and I think that will come. We did make one tile that is our crowdsourcing tile that says, please suggest a tile. And um, we were actually brainstorming yesterday, like what what prize could we give people um, <clears throat> for suggesting tiles? And I think we're going to come up with something creative, you know, to figure out how to get, you know, people to suggest tiles so they get used to it. And I just have to figure out what I can give them for um, <clears throat> so that they suggest tiles. And we're going to keep working on that. Okay. All right. Uh, a couple logistics questions here. Um, is the Case Western website visible uh, to the public, which it is? Yes. Uh, CWRU.InfoReadyScale.com is the URL. Again, that's CWRU.InfoReadyScale.com. Um, the PowerPoint slides can be made available to you. If you let us know, we're happy to, to send those over to you. And uh, the, the other question here was around purchasing. Um, and whether or not it's available um, through subscription basis, which is the case. Um, if you're an InfoReady client, um, you can simply add an addendum to your existing master service agreement um, in order to, to take advantage uh, of the, the, the service. Um, with that being said, uh, and no other questions. And if you have any questions for me, I'm on the please feel free to reach out and as you are looking at our engagement hub if you have the time to do that any feedback is more than welcome if you see something oh it would be great to add this or I hadn't thought about it this way or you just want to chat about it please feel free to give me a call or send me an email wonderful without any further ado I want to thank uh, you Joan and Perlene for the time this afternoon uh, and everyone sitting in uh, and listening to the to the great webinar today. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to uh, notify Scott uh, there at the office and he'll be happy to, to answer any of those. If you have questions about the Case Western Reserve uh, implementation of the Engagement Hub, by all means, contact Joan or Perlene. With that. Thank you for your time. Thank you.